My name's Barry. Welcome to another podcast episode called Christianity Explained. Today's episode, and I hope you uh, noticed the title card. <laughs> yes, the mask. Thanks for the cloaking device. <laughs> and hopefully you picked up the Star Trek reference. Don't worry, I'll explain. And what exactly am I talking about? Well, that's the subject of today's video and podcast. It's about prayer. <laughs> Let's switch. All right. What exactly am I talking about? First, for the for those of you who have no freaking clue as to what it meant, the cloaking device was a sci-fi plot device created by Gene Roddenberry and his crew when they created the original Star Trek series. It was held by the Rom it was created by the Romulan as a way of, of making their ship invisible. And the idea is you couldn't see. You had to strain your eyes or do something just to find where the enemy ship was. And it, and because it was hidden, it made that ship extra dangerous and more capable of tackling a much stronger opponent. <laughs> of course, just being Star Trek, the heroes outsmart them. <laughs> Uh, now, what does that have to do with today? And um, what does this have to do with the mask? Well, it's kind of like this. Okay, it's not going to make you invisible. No, we'll hi hide you from prying eyes. That's true. <laughs> it hasn't gone that far. But, if I put, can you see what I'm saying? Can you even hear what I'm, I think you get the idea. Most people can't see what you're saying with the mask. If they just had the eyeball, because your mouth is hidden by a cloth. Most people have trouble hearing or understanding, especially if you're talking softly. Now, because my mic is about five inches away from me, <laughs> it's going to pick up my voice. And I am projecting. But if I have the mask on and I'm in a room with a couple other people, they're not going to hear. In fact, I was at a, a, at a funeral service at a, at a Catholic church. And I was praying in the spirit. Nobody knew I was even doing that. Hmm. Because the mask kind of muffled the sound of my voice. And I was speaking softly because I didn't want to be heard. And I was praying for the family. And that's a good thing. You see, nobody could see what I was doing. Nobody knew that I claim blessing and healing and things like that for that. I could be in Walmart and praying quietly for somebody and nobody would know. Get the idea? Cloaking device. It hides what you're doing. So my dear intercessors, and those of you who might now, and by the way, this is also good news for you who are not comfortable with the whole idea of praying in tongues. Guess what else? It helps those of you, or those of us, who prefer to pray in English. And in such a way, it does the same thing for you. You have the power. You had it the whole time. It hides what you're doing 
in such a way that people don't know what you're doing. They don't see uh, you using your voice in prayer quietly. <laughs> Nobody knows. They can't see. That's why I gave this podcast the title I did, The Mask. Thanks for the cloaking device. I actually wanted to put in a little epithet, but I think you can guess what it might be. <laughs> but I want to encourage you uh, not to be afraid of, of praying effectively. Because right now, there's a lot going on in this country alone. And I'm sure it's true enough for Christians in other countries that prayer is very essential. And it's hard, especially when pe- when the culture seems hostile to it and that. And that, in fact, has always been hostile. But that's why it's so important that we pray and not be afraid of praying for people around us or even in public areas. And when you have... And I know a lot of places are insisting on masks. Okay, fine. I get to do a little stealth operation. <laughs> Whoop. Are you seeing what I'm getting at? Instead of being critical and saying, ah, I love them. Okay, I don't like the idea of government forcing the issue. It should be a personal decision yourself. You should freely, yes, we need to do something. And yes, I've heard that it does reduce it to some degree, like 80%, I think, from what I understand. But guess what? I could sit here and argue all the time. But I'm I'm arguing instead, instead of complaining about it, berating other People, especially brothers and sisters in Christ, why not turn the table on the enemy? And I'm talking about the spiritual enemy and those who are kind of enslaved. Turn the table, up, turn it around. Say, okay, you're going to insist on wearing a mask? Thanks, stupid! What a cloaking device! Full fader, I'm maximum! <laughs> are you going to see... That's what I want to encourage. That's what I want to encourage you. Not to feel intimidated by what people are doing in that. Because that's what prayer is. By the way, I had another reason for the whole idea of a cloaking device, full phasers on maximum and all that stuff. You do recall that according to scripture, we are in a war, of a spiritual warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood but against powers of principalities and rulers of the air. That's the enemies that we're supposed to be uh, going at, at. That's the one that we wrestle with. That's the one we're fighting against, not human beings who are so easily influenced by that, especially if they're not aware that there is a, an opportunistic schemer looking to exploit. So by praying, and you want, and you have to be in an area that says, we're ma- Fine. Cloaking device. Ooh. Boom. <laughs> Start thinking that way. In case you, since you watch, if you're hearing this, that was a fist hitting the thick, my hand. Kind of indicates that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be combative. We're supposed to go after. Now, I have wonderful friends who aren't going to talk or put, talk like I do, but uh, don't let them fool you. They're just as hard-hitting as I am. They just don't use the language I do. So make no mistake. <laughs> I have a wonderful friends who have a quiet voice, and they are. They're just as capable. Father, and I pray that more people would be emboldened by uh, that. <laughs> See, that's what it is. And that's the funny thing. Yen, he is trying to keep people from being aware of what they can do in that. Now, this, is this an endorsement of, of the silliness from the... No, but if they're going to give me a weapon uh, uh, like that, like a cloak, right, then, hey, 
See ya, stupid. <laughs> but see, that's what it is. Like, what could I say? I hanged out with guys who were, who were very creative in what they did in a fantasy role-playing game. Uh, <laughs> if you get them something, they'll exploit it. <laughs> so, and I learned from them. Uh, it's a good thing. <laughs> and I pray that it's used in a good way that black stuff. But remember, you're not going out at all. You have the Holy Spirit in you. If you are a follower of Christ, you have the Spirit of God in you. He's able to give you the strength, the courage to go and do. He is able to give you the words. Just quietly in your mind, ask Him for the words just softly and quietly behind that cloaking device, the thing that everybody insists you wear, and just quietly pray, boom, like that. <laughs> hey, they're going to be that stupid. <laughs> but I want to encourage you. Be not afraid of that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, boy. I will be following this podcast up with a little bit more of a detailed uh, blog post. It should come out sometime Thursday. Hmm. I'll follow it up with scriptures. That's kind of what I'm doing. This is more like the entertaining listening, which I'm hoping you'll enjoy and maybe read. Okay? Hey, I want to thank you for your time. I hope you uh, uh, just piqued your interest. Because seriously, it's in the writing. I take things a little bit more on the serious tone and that. But I'm trying to stir up your heart and mind to think. But don't just go by what I say. Go to the Father. Ask Him. Ask Jesus. Like, what the heck is He talking about? He quoted something from Ephesians uh, 5. Well, I believe it's Ephesians 5 or 6. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And we're told to put on the whole armor of God. Uh, and the and the play, because that is our spiritual weapon, and we have the sword of the spirit, the word of God. Incorporate that into your prayer effectively, <laughs> and let's pray positive, constructive words. All right, that doesn't mean okay. I'm going to be positive about something I see that's bad. No, that's more. How do I turn this? How do you want to turn this around? And be positive, but not cursing or saying, ah, blah, 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 but think that. Be creative, okay? Look, if I have a bunch, if I know a bunch of guys from an old group who get creative because somebody gives them something and let me, why is a Christian so afraid to get creative and do something constructive? Let's not be afraid of that. Creativity, it did not come from the enemy. It came from God. He's the one who gave us the ability to be creative in our prayer. He's the one who's given us the ability to do those things. And he wants to, us to use that shit for the glory of God. Let's go for it. Do. All right. Enough rattling. I hope you enjoy. And I invite you to come to my blog site, Christianity Explained. Uh, that blog. And for... You should see Thursday's blog post, okay? This is just goes up earlier. Hope you listen and get something out of this. <laughs> Thank you for your time and hope you have a blessed day. See you when I see ya.